For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. When he is come. Now notice what he said up here at the beginning. He will, he is with you, dwells with you, and shall be in you. But here he says he's going to reprove the world of sin. How is he going to reprove the world? He's in you. He's got to use your mouth. Not just be quiet, but use your mouth to reprove the world of sin. Right? Notice he... Oh, I tell you. You know, he just backs me right in the corner. <laughs> he gets me right to this point, and I'm like, I don't want to say that, I don't want to say that, I don't want to say that. And he goes, nope, go ahead. You've already come this far. You might as well say the rest. <laughs> You notice what he doesn't say here. When he shall come, all he's going to talk about is grace. He says he's going to reprove the world of sin. That means the Holy Ghost talks about sin. So if you go to a church where they don't talk about sin, Holy Ghost ain't there. Or at least he ain't talking <coughs> through them. Okay. <laughs> then he says, of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. In other words, he's got to talk about righteousness because I'm not going to be there and you're not going to see me, so he's going to talk. Where is he going to talk? In you and through you. Okay. Now, he's also, now watch this. It says, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment. Hmm, the Holy Ghost is going to talk about judgment. Well, I, do, I don't like that judgment stuff. Well, but you're not going to be under judgment. Yeah, but I still don't like it. I don't like to think about somebody else being under judgment. Then get them saved. That's our job here. Why is God taking so long? Maybe it's because he's got lazy workers. Always takes longer to get a job done if your people are lazy. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Of judgment. Now watch. Because the prince of this world is judged. He's been judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Isn't that something? He said, man, I got stuff I want to tell you. You can't bear them right now. And then later, he tells those things to the Apostle Paul. When, when Saul gets saved, he tells them to him. And so Paul's teachings are the continuing words of Jesus. And what, it, what, was, what was he wanting to tell them that he couldn't tell them at that time? Man, whenever, after I go and die and get raised from the dead... You can get born again, and I'm going to manifest myself in you, and I'm going to come and live in you, and you're going to be a new creation. You're going to be made in my, in my image and my likeness. We're going to be clones. We're going to be just, and you're going to be just like me, he would say. He said, but I can't tell you that now. Because if I, if I let that out, that's a mystery. And if I let it out, then the princes of this world won't crucify me, and then it'll stop it all from happening. So right now, just wait. But I got stuff to tell you. And whenever, I, after all this happens and I send him, he's going to be the one I tell you through. Do you get that? He said, I got lots I want to tell you, but I can't. You, can, you can't bear it right now. Why? Because they were natural minded and couldn't receive the things of the Spirit. Verse 13, how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. You get that? Guide you into all truth, not some truth. All truth. That means it is possible, it is expected that we are to grow up and know all truth. You get that? Well, nobody knows all the truth. Well, speak for yourself, and you are, because he expects us to know all truth. It's the Holy Spirit's job to lead us, to guide us into all truth. Matter of fact, you know, it says that he will guide us into all truth but it never says he will lead you to lay hands on the sick. Never says he will lead or guide you to lay hands on the sick. See, he can't do that. He can't just be, be walking through Walmart and he takes your hand and throw it over on somebody. <laughs> Why? Because he works through your will. 
So what does he do? He will lead and guide you into truth. Truth should force you to make a decision whether you're going to obey or not. So the truth, being led into the truth, will cause you to do his word. His job is to guide you into truth. Your job is to be submissive to that truth, obey that truth, and do what it says. Why? Because that's an act of your will. If he just took your hand and threw it on somebody, that's not an act of your will. Which means what? That means you would get no reward for doing it. You say, well, I don't care about a reward. Bull. <laughs> you do. You just don't want to admit it because you don't think it sounds spiritual. But Jesus was very spiritual, and he says, when I come, I come with your reward in my hands. So if Jesus thought rewards were important, you might want to think they're important. Amen? Why? Because it's not the reward that's important as we know it. The reward is the result of being obedient and faithful, and it shows. So the reward shows that you were obedient and faithful. That's what counts, you understand? Now, we're going to take all that stuff he gives us and throw it right back at his feet. We're going to, yep, thank you. Load me down. Mm -hmm. I want more rewards. Why? Because so I have more to give to Jesus. That's why you should want rewards. Amen? Now, he goes on. He says, Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. This is an area where we haven't excelled in relationship with the Holy Spirit. We want to know things that are now, but he will show you things to come. Now, whenever he shows you things to come, that's called a word of wisdom. Why? Because he wants to give you the wisdom of what to do in that situation. So he will show you what's coming so you'll know what to do and how to deal with it. God gives a message to the church, to the, the ministry. The ministry puts it out to the church so that the church should be prepared with what happens. But it doesn't matter if you know it if you don't believe it and do it. So you have to believe it and do it, right? And not wait. Listen, you've got to make your decision now while there's some degree of peace. Because in the middle of the battle, you will make the wrong decision. If you wait to then to make the decision, it'll be wrong because you'll take the easy way out. So that means you have to decide ahead of time. No, if this happens, I will not do that. I will do this. That's called training. See? In the military, and martial arts, things like that, it's like, if he does this, I will do this. And then you drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it until you don't think. They move, you move. Bam. Sometimes you move before they move because you know what move they're going to make. 